name is Alejandro with GSC, and today we're going to take a look at an advanced mate called the Path Mate. The Path Mate allows you to constrain a selected point on a component to a path. So in our case here, we want our ring to be constrained uh, to a path, which is essentially is our loop. Let's go ahead and explore how we can apply this mate. So before applying our path bait, there are two things you're going to require. You're going to require a point on a component for our first bait selection. In this case, it's going to be the origin of our ring. And then we're also going to need a path, which can be a reference sketch. It can also be a continuous edge. In this case, we're going to use the sketch that we use to create our suite feature in our uh, ring path. So if I actually go into my feature tree and into my ring path component, I'm going to show the one of the sweep sketches. And here you can see now I can see a, a my, my path sketch that I use for my ring path component. So I have my, my component with the reference point and then I also have my path. So let's go ahead and activate my mate command and the path mate is an advanced mate and I'll go ahead and activate it for my first selection it wants me to select a component vertex which have, which I stated before is going to be the origin of my ring for my path selection I'm going to use this reference sketch that I used in my ring path component you can see here that that vertex is now constrained to that path sketch. And I'll go ahead and select OK. From here, if I try to move my ring, you'll see now that that vertex point that I selected, in this case the origin of our ring, is now constrained to that path sketch. Now there are some additional options in your pathmate that you can apply in order to constrain our ring even further. So let's go back into our pathmate. So I'll go ahead and add it our edit our pathmate. And in the property manager, you'll see that I have some additional constraints. So under path constraint, right now we have it set up to free. So that essentially allows us to move our ring anywhere along the path, or our vertex any, anywhere along the path, I should say. Then we could also define a distance along a path. So in this case, let's say we're five inches. We're at the five inch distance of our path. When I apply that constraint, I cannot dynamically move the part along the path. I can still rotate it, roll it, and spin it, but I cannot move it to another position. That's because we constrain it to the five inch location of our path. You could also use, instead of distance along path, you can also use percent along path. So let's just say we want it to be at the 80% location of our path. And once again, I can still roll the part and spin it, but I cannot move it along the path. So let's go back into our path mate. And we're going to change our path constraint back to free so that now I can move my ring anywhere along the path. I'll go back into my path mate. And this time we're going to explore the pitch and yaw control. So that's an additional constraint that restricts uh, our, one of our degrees of freedom. So free, obviously, I can spin this any way I want. If I put follow path, you'll see that I'll get a little reference triad uh, that with green, blue, and red arrows that essentially allows me to control how the ring is going to be oriented. So in this case, we want, if we look at the property manager, we want our Z direction, which is in blue. You can see here the blue arrow to always point in the direction of the path. 
so that when I select OK, no matter how I move my ring along the path, its Z direction is always pointing in the same direction as the path. So next, we're going to explore our final constraint, which is our roll constraint. Uh, so if you go back into our pathway, you'll see in the property manager we have a roll control. Right now, it's set up to free. And essentially, what this means is that we could spin or roll our part 360 degrees or our ring 360 degrees. If I don't want that, I could actually under roll control, select an up vector to define the up direction of our ring. In this case, I'm going to have to select an edge from an edge from one of the components. And it can't be the ring itself. Since our circular ring path really doesn't have a good edge to select, I'm actually going to reveal a component that I already have in this assembly. So here I have a ring stand to go ahead and show. And I'll go back into my path bait. Under roll control, I'll select ve up vector. And I'll select the reference edge. So this is going to be my up direction. You'll notice that on the ring itself, I get another triad once again. And that triad is shown essentially by X, Z, and Y directions. And in this case, I want my up direction, let's just say, to be the X direction. And you'll see that the X direction, which is the red arrow, now points in the same direction as our vector. Or if I want the Y direction to point up, I can flip it. You'll see that the green arrow is vertical, opposed to which is the same direction as our edge. And if I apply the mate, you'll see now that I can move my ring along the path, but now it is its orientation is fully defined. It's pointing straight up. I cannot roll or spin it. So that's how you apply the path mate. This has been Alejandro with GSC. Thank you for watching.